Alright, what's up y'all, it's like a fan here. As y'all can see by the title of today's video, we're here to talk about how one drip move changed the game in NBA 2K20. So we're gonna do with this gameplay. As you can see, we're hovering over an old video of mine from November 17th. Three basketball gods winners pull up and get exposed, blah, blah, blah. You get the deal. Anyway, the point of this video is that I'm gonna show you an old gameplay right here from November 17th. And then I got a new gameplay right here to show you the difference in the style of dribbling, you know, pick and roll sets, all types of stuff. So we're gonna get straight into this. I hope y'all enjoy. If you do, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on them noties, all that good stuff. Let's try this one of a thousand likes in the first 24 hours. And again, the purpose of this video is to show you guys what the difference of the gameplays look like pre-patch and post-patch so again just to reiterate this is pre-patch this is actually insane comp for the time that we're playing ss3 ss2 and ss2 and it's really crazy to go back to all this stuff but you can see three basketball gods winners they all probably won the event together they got the playmaking shot creator two-way sharp and glass lock with that can shoot the rim sharp pretty much and then our lineup is very interesting so you're gonna see we got the playmaking shot creator two-way sharp with playmaker takeover shout out to those who know about kitchens build from back in the day the 6-4 two-way sharp the red and green pie chart with play takeover and then we got my finisher at the big man spot as always john of the deal and shout out to my boy ak on the far left also known as shots as some of y'all have been asking about where he's been and we'll get back to the gameplays really soon you guys know with this xbox issue as far as the you know party chats and stuff it's been a problem for us to get over but Again, you can see, and this is what we're here, like I said, to talk about, is the behind the back and the importance of how how it helped the pick and roll game, how it helped ISO even in the first place too. But a lot of people, I, I see a lot of feedback talking about, you know, a lot of people, they think that the behind the back getting out of the game hurt ISO more than pick and roll. I 100% disagree. I feel like you don't really need to use the behind the back as a crutch when it comes to ISO where, you, you know, hop dunking really does get you open if you really want to think about it. Whereas with the pick and roll game, the behind the back helps so much. I, I remember my initial reaction to it with my boys. I woke up, I literally woke up one day. I know it sounds like crazy. It's like 2K history pretty much, right? Taking y'all back. But I woke up one day to the whole group chat talking about how the behind the back was patched and everybody was freaking out. They were so worried about, you know, the inside big being completely like abolished as far as the 3v3 goes. And, and I didn't even think anything of it, but it's really more the 2v2. It made it so I can't set screens anymore. But the reason for that is a build like AK's no longer fits in at the 2v2 because obviously you're gonna run into the two-way slashing playmaker, which is just gonna completely dominate him. However, you can see how beautiful everything came together as far as the 3v3 stuff. Now, I don't really have a biased viewpoint on this. I don't really have, you know, I don't feel one way or the other as far as, oh, I really wish the behind the back was still in the game. Oh, I really wish that I'm glad that it's not. I'm gonna just put it like this. In a game where the dribble moves are so bland now without this thing, I feel like this is the one crutch that made dribbling still good. And for it to come out of the game completely just demolished everything to do with dribbling. So again, the whole purpose of this video is just me showcasing to you guys what the stuff looked like. You see it gets a nasty rebound right there and then the rim sharp decks is around a little bit, hits the white. So my agenda with this video, while it is to entertain you guys, because I do find this to be super entertaining content where the point guards are just so unguardable back then, but to stay on topic. My whole agenda with this video is to show you guys the difference between before and after on this point guard stuff and how it completely affected dribbling, how it affected the inside big versus outside big, all that types of stuff. And me, you guys know, I just love to talk. So we're just going to go ahead and skip that. But <laughs> Kitchen Bangs the White, nice little dot right there from AK. I'm sure that's what I was talking about. But y'all know me. I love to pause and rewind and break things down. But that's not what we're here for in this gameplay. But I will do that in the right situation that I maybe decide to. You're going to see right here though, this is really one of the biggest struggles. And we're go we'll go ahead and run that back. Where this was this real struggle behind being a big man before patch so you could not reach like that and you'll get out of position super poorly like you can see me right here and really this, is the, this was the thing is that perimeter defense was a lot harder for bigs to do as soon as that patch hit i was able to switch everything completely play sides on every screen i feel like it almost benefited inside bigs in that sense because then 3v3 just became this slip fest of just like i said i mean it's literally just oh i'll cut then then the rim sharp cuts then my inside big cuts and every single play is just a double team on the point guard and and then the big man just drops down through the middle now it definitely made it so point guards are easier to guard as well so at the same time you don't really have to play sides on everything but it was just kind of a given now this is where i was basically explaining we're just dodging the lock however they want to put their big man on kitchen so that's where us having two point guards benefited kind of aside the point of this whole behind the back thing but with that said i mean this really forces them to play sides you guys know the deal if the big's on kitchen then they're going to be able to just like you know slip it off the first try every single time anyway so so you're going to see we run it right here, go with the slip, the corner can't help all that well. And you can't really help off AK that much either. Obviously he has 90-ish three-pointer on catch and shoots from the corner. He's not going to miss on those. 
So again, back to the defensive end, our outlook is a lot different nowadays than it was back then. You're going to see, I was so focused on the hedge defense. It was always guard backside. Don't give up easy twos. Don't do anything like that, where it really doesn't make sense to. But the reason that I did that is because speed mattered so much as far as defending perimeter. So for me to just willingly switch onto a point guard every single time, it wasn't exactly the, the seen as the best thing to do. Whereas nowadays, I'm playing sides off everything. I want to guard the point guards because I just feel like my height just rules and they can't really do anything on me and I can just lead them to the driver every single time, play for chase downs, and it's really easy to box up ISO nowadays. And that's why I will say, I did say early on that it definitely affects like the pick and roll the most as far as this behind the back goes, but I'll, I'll just put it like this. It's still easy for point guards who like ISO to get up their two pointers and stuff like that. But it is definitely like way harder for them to get up threes because with the ISO comes, you can just guard them super tight. They'll get past you and they'll just dunk every single time. That's just kind of how it is. That's just the truth of it. But for 2v2, that's super acceptable. I mean, to take a two every single time is not that bad. You see nice little defensive adjustment for everybody where Kitchen kind of bit down too low on the full court press. And then me and AK kind of conformed and guarded like two dudes at once with or guarded three guys at once with us too. And you're gonna see we're still trying to dodge lock but they keep on just putting them wherever wherever we don't go pretty much so now we're just gonna roll with it <laughs> i mean it was a pretty invalid way to play in the first place like it's so hard to just dodge the lock at, at every given time and again i'm just gonna fast forward all these breakdowns it pretty much what actually now that i want to explain it though what i was what i was basically saying is and it gives even more to my point of what i'm talking about here the bigs on the backside were just always so hesitant to step up because they didn't really want to do the full switches that dude at the, at the three knows he can't guard ak one-on-one -on -one. so it was pretty much just yeah not really all that acceptable to just play sides on everything and you would think it's the opposite you would think you want to play sides on everything because you want to stop them from getting threes up but the fact of the matter was the bigs just can't hang with the guards that's really how it was and for a dude to be even even taller than me at six foot nine and have a slower pie chart like the rim sharp so if you're talking like you know the seven foot rim sharps and stuff like that or the craziness of back in the day when people would actually run seven three pure rims on the on the three v three court and stage that, that is just still so crazy to me i remember i spent the whole first month or two just making fun of every dude who came in there with a pure rim and talking about it on my channel but pretty much and you guys should go check out some of the old videos too i did like pretty much i'll explain it like this i had the 3v3 pro-am team going on right where we were the number one team in the world for the first two or three months of the game being a thing and i had a lot of top top team matchups like one versus four one versus three one versus five stuff like that super fire gameplays you guys got to check that out if you're really into like the whole old content thing but anyway as you can see i'll go ahead and pause this right here so i can talk about this we went nine for nine with one turnover that is the power of that behind the back it was so hard to get stops the bigs on the back side just couldn't do anything about it like i was saying so now what we're going to go ahead and do as i'll close out of this and on to the new gameplay. So this one right here is for me to explain to you guys how point guards have adapted. You're going to see my homie Kitchen run a full-time point in this one. We got Cook playing as a lockdown. And we're going against not the highest level of competition. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I would say the, the comp level was even higher even back then than it is right now. However, you do see we got the Elite 2, two-way pass first wing with the Gold Rush formula. Even though nowadays, the tough thing about this on Xbox is half these events probably don't even matter. But anyway, you get the deal. They had a nice little lineup with good mobility on the backside. Kitchen's on his three-point playmaker with lock takeover. Cook's on his two-way slashing playmaker with lock takeover as well, and I've maintained my same exact build throughout the whole year. It's still my most comp build to this day. We'll see where Hitting Legend takes me. But anyway, moving along with the gameplay. I want to explain to you guys how different the whole running point guard thing has become. So you're going to see Kitchen and their point guard using the crabs and stuff as well, where pretty much... You have to take advantage of the defense forcing you to drive. And you see right there, I get the nice little standing lob. I have become, a lot of this is also adaptation of just becoming a better player. So for instance, I didn't know about the standing lob stuff earlier in the year. Why? Probably because having to do more different things on offense than to just let your point guard, you know, behind the back, back and forth all day has become, you know, something you actually have to do. So with that, I pretty much have learned <laughs> things like the standing lob and stuff like that, or a better like IQ on the on the screen game, how to get me more involved because, you know, we don't have the best ability anymore to get your point guard open. I will say, I think the game was more fun when the behind the back was in the game, and as soon as they took the behind the back out too, I definitely believe that they should have taken both out if they're going to do it between like the, the long athlete package on the layups pretty much with the hop dunks and the behind the back because I already knew. I definitely already knew. As far as the 2v2 stuff goes, those play locks are going to take over on that two stuff where 
they pretty much already could dominate any play sharp it's just that the play sharps actually maintain like a really good ability to you know never really lose the ball unless you just miss shots like that but again you can see kitchen was playing for the crab that is the adaptation of a point guard nowadays where they have learned you know things like that and it, i really don't mean to stretch the point forward too much <laughs> as far as like the whole like oh look at this 2k history like it's so cool to see everything like come full circle and you know all this stuff but it really is kind of cool in my eyes where you know as a community everybody learns as as we move along throughout the year and defense changes as well if they were to, if they were to run any pick and roll here or any pick and pop i promise you we'd play sides on it no matter what why because i can hang with any point guard nowadays too where it's really not hard to guard the iso as far as like taking away their three pointers go it is very hard to guard iso if, if you're talking like two pointers and that's why on 2v2 i feel like iso is absolute meta where you know you could play up and like tight as, as high as you want but you're not gonna be able to get stops because you're just they're just gonna be dunking every single play and there's nothing to do about it and then if you sag off obviously they're going to be able to spray threes but you don't really have to sag off on the 3v3 court because at that point a two is a two you can just give it up <laughs> so you see we're still with that stuff as far as like the pick and roll iq if anything like i said i've got way better at it as far as reading the defense you know being more aware of getting me involved as well and again you're gonna see right here switch everything even if they don't even set a screen cook just kind of got out of position and then low-key nice little corner help and like bait by kitchen off the corner right there but Again, take a really just talk about this. I want I want to drive this point forward. The behind the back getting taken out of the game hurt everybody as far as offense goes, and the peep and the people that it benefits are indeed the two-way slashing playmakers when it comes to that 2v2 stuff. The 3v3, this is still meta. This is like the quick stops and you know the crabs and stuff like that, and all that stuff is still meta. And you can see I'm out here getting some nice rebounds. Everybody's out here missing their catch and shoots. It's kind of sad. And let's talk about that too. I feel like low-key. Compared to back in the day, dudes just be hitting ridiculous amounts of whites nowadays. And people were, people, this will just happen with any 2K. Obviously, you know, people will learn the ways of shooting. They'll learn how to do it with low three-pointer. They'll learn how to just master their jump shot if they have 90. And, you know, progressively throughout the year, people are going to get better at shooting. Me personally with 53 pointer and now I'm out here shooting on like pick and pop from the wing with my pierce slash with like 10 shooting badges. I wouldn't have been able to do that at the beginning of the year. I didn't even think I couldn't even shoot with 68 three pointer and 13 or 14 shooting badges on my play slash. And again, it's all adaptation and learning and stuff like that too. But you can see, I mean, the, the, the ISO is so easy to box up nowadays just because there's nowhere to go with it. Okay, I had to make a cut. I can't say that because that is not the truth. There's nowhere to go but to the paint because when you just press up on somebody super tight with this ISO stuff nowadays, they can just get right past you, get to the paint really easy, get the hop dunk as you're behind them and just kind of shrug you off them with the hop. But what we're here to talk about, and I'm going to finalize this talking point on this video, who benefited off the behind the back being taken out of the game? And then we'll talk at the very end as far as like what I wish, you know, the game was like or what I hope next year is like as well. So who benefited? We're here to talk about pretty much on 3v3, the outside PGs benefited, but on 2v2, the two-way slashing playmakers, anybody who ISOs, and you know, if you're an inside point guard, pretty much, you benefited off of that. Now, who also doesn't benefit off of this is probably the inside bigs, if we're being real. Inside bigs with less capable point guards just become by default less usable. You know, in the days where it could just be behind the back this and behind the back that, you can just stand still wait till your dude sets a pick and you know there's not much iq needed in it where you're gonna do stuff like this with the slips and, and stuff and have point guards like kitchen to shoot through the double teams anyway but we're not here to talk about that <laughs> so pretty much what i'm talking about is the people that benefited off this it's only dependent on which court for the outside point guards they low-key sort of benefited if you're talking for the 3v3 and then for the inside point guards they benefited on the 2v2 tremendously because two-way slashing playmakers are easily the meta now and you can see we're out here just all shooting whites at this point but and then cook shoots another white look bro that that was that game was just ridiculous and like i said earlier if you want to talk about another thing the amount of whites that have gone in with this new update is just ridiculous but like i said i mean that's just kind of shooting shooting getting better throughout the course of the year is just a natural thing i don't know if 2k just juice like juices the sliders on ball control and three-pointer throughout the year to try to make the people who like kind of suck at it just better but anyway i hope you all enjoyed the video if you did feel free to drop a like sub if you do turn on the noties all that good stuff let's try these one to a thousand likes in the first 24 hours if you made it to the very end of the video put cook in the comments show your support this made it all the way through to the very end and to wrap up my final thoughts on this stuff as i let this play out on the outro i just feel like 
Personally, I'd rather the behind the back stay in the game, but it's only because of how stale the rest of the dribble moves are. I mean, the fact that Kitchen is pretty limited to, you know, quick stopping, doing size ups to crab, and I mean, that's about it. Step back threes as well. And there's really not much to use. That behind the back to, to like sham out of it, to chain it in the like screen combos and stuff like that. I'm sure the ISO people loved it as well. I just feel like the more dribble moves you have in this game, the better. I'm gonna just put it like that. I think the more variety that 2K can provide us with, it's that much better. I don't know why they could ever have dribble moves in the game and take them out. I just feel like that's wasted content that your developers and all that stuff have put time into. I don't see why you should ever take something out that has like, you know, been good in the game. For instance, the momentums and stuff like that. Momentum behind the back, momentum spin, and just breaking ankles on momentums. It just doesn't make sense to me why you would take stuff like that out of the game when it's already been in it and you already have the means of keeping it in there too. So anyway, that is my final thoughts on that stuff. I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, like I said, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on them noties, all that good stuff. And on that, take it easy, man. Peace.